Good day and welcome to AIM 2020. Um, I'm Tashkent Pader. I'm an associate professor at the College of Engineering at Northeastern University. Uh, I'm also the director of the Institute for Experiential Robotics. I'm here to give you a quick tour of our research, a virtual tour of our research at Northeastern University in Robotics. If you had a chance to visit us in our building, you would enter the Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex through this atrium, that's the background um, on my video. Um, and we are located on the fifth floor. And I um, would be more than happy to host you if you have a chance to visit Boston uh, when we are back to a new normal uh, in, our, in our lives. Uh, so with this, let me share my slides um, to get started. <clears throat> All right. Um, again, um, the Institute for Experiential Robotics at Northeastern University is a, is a new initiative. Uh, it is part of the Research Vision 2025 at Northeastern. And our vision at the Institute is to transcend human limits through realization of collaborative, adaptive, culturally sensitive, humanitarian, and cognizant robots. Um, there are two important aspects of this vision. One is the robot side, where as the robotics researchers, we are trying to advance the capabilities of, of our current robot systems. But then there's also the human side, where we look at the uh, impact of robots on technology and try to understand uh, the experience that the humans uh, go through when they interact with robots. Experience is a core value at Northeastern, hence the Institute for Experiential Robotics. And we look at the experience from a, from a multi-dimensional perspective. You know, we look at the experience where robots learn from their own experiences. As a result, we look at machine learning and AI um, algorithms for robots, where robots might learn from human experiences, where the personalization comes into picture. And then we look at the uh, enrichment of collective human robot experiences, um, at work, at common places, and in the home. The vision has been driven by grand societal challenges. Aging is one. Transportation, while well, you may argue that not maybe in the past couple months or so, but transportation, um, independent mobility is another societal challenge we have. And then the aging, in, aging infrastructure we have is um, you know, combined with urbanization is a challenge. Um, you know, I sometimes say if we can make things work in Boston, that it can scale up to many other other um, situations around the world. So we are looking at uh, problems that are driven by um, by grand societal challenges we have. Um, again, robotics is part of the Northeastern 2025 vision. Um, it hits or it, it, it is well aligned with uh, the university's research um, uh, focus in health, sustainability, and energy. At the Institute, we have, um, uh, we organize ourselves into five uh, collaborative, connected, convergent research trusts on human robot collaboration, perception planning and learning, systems design and control, uh, secure robotics, ethics and policy, economics and glo global frameworks. Uh, and again, the, the unifying theme is to enrich collective human robot experience. Uh, we, you know, our sample projects, which I will try to go through a few of those uh, in the given time, uh, include um, uh, working with NASA's humanoid robot Valkyrie uh, or collaborative uh, robots in uh, seafood processing plants. Uh, we have other projects where we uh, deploy uh, exploration robots um, in, at, at, in Antarctica, uh, as well as um, we have an active um, program in autonomous driving. Uh, Northeastern University has a global uh, network of campuses, and we are co collecting data not, on, not only in Boston, but you know, in, in, in um, urban areas such as London, Vancouver, uh, Toronto uh, and Portland, uh, Maine, uh, to basically have, an, have a rich um, uh, data-driven uh, algorithms for, for um, uh, self-driving. Um, at the Institute, again, just a quick uh, recap, we are more than 30 investigators uh, and we organize ourselves into, um, into different research cores. Again, they are highly connected. Uh, we work at, you know, in, the, in, the, in the robotics area, 
uh, we have an accelerator score where we look at you know power systems, communication systems that are that are in, that enable that accelerate the development of uh, robots. Interactions look at you know human robot interactions, human environment, uh, robot environment interactions, and so on. Humanic score studies the, at the the challenges at the nexus of data, human values, and technology. Systems core approaches robotics from a systems integration perspective, system science perspective, and synergy score is where we drive use cases from um, from some non-traditional areas where robotics did not look at yet. Uh, we have an experiential PhD program in robotics where it is interdisciplinary and, and, and collaborative in nature. Um, it brings our well-known undergraduate co-op experience to a new level and you know we provide um, graduate co-op experiences for our PhD students at um, our industry partners and then the innovation and entrepreneurship is one of the key components of the of the PhD program. Uh, when I talk about robotics research I always say you know humans, robots and spaces. Um, this this um, concept figure shows our existing building on the right hand side which is the interdisciplinary science and engineering complex where we are currently located but then our vision is to build the next building called exp um, next door um, which um, which should open in the next few years uh, which will have more dedicated laboratories and and space for our robot robotics research um, part of the vision uh, started out as a concept uh, that uh, was on a piece of drawing where you know where we envision a benchmarking uh, facility where we can do a lot of testing uh, and then we develop some concept diagrams concept pictures where we are interested in studying um, human machine interaction human machine teaming in extreme environments including underwater ocean works including um, uh, extraterrestrial environments your know, space and and so on uh, this is this is a concept at this point but you know it's part of the vision to develop this facility uh, as as part of the institute for experiential robotics let me now give you a few examples very very uh, quick examples of some of the projects that we are currently working on um, for the past uh, four years or so we've been partnering with nasa um, to work on uh, their humanoid robot valkyrie and um, what we done is what we've done is um, in collaboration with our partners we developed um, techniques new methods to enhance the autonomy of the robot uh, for task and motion planning uh, in in unknown and dynamic environments uh, here's one example where we were able to scale up our code base our, our um, knowledge base from the DARPA robotics challenge to complete complex tasks of um, going through um, cluttered environments and, and uh, manipulating, um, handling uh, materials in, in, um, um, in, in a fully uh, automated way. Um, <clears throat> another uh, part of the project that we are interested in, and I decided to put this on my slides because it's one of our papers at AIM 2020, uh, we are interested in understanding how um, static walking um, interacts with with the environment right so what is under the yellow tarp here is a sand uh, and our paper on institute terrain classification estimation for nasa's human robot valkyrie uh, will be on the program on tuesday and my students will talk about you know how we looked at this pro problem and how we you know some of our preliminary results on understanding the terrain that the robot is walking on so that we can adjust um, we can adjust certain step parameters where where the walking uh, when to enable the robot to walk on rough terrain um, another example is a new example and i think this is a this is a great example on um, how we envision the the experiential robotics um, as a new field um, this is um, a new NSF grant uh, on coordination of dyadic object handover um, in, for human-robot interactions. I mean, the idea is when humans hand over objects 
when we hand over objects um, uh, with, with our partners, we don't think. But then it's such a rich um, interaction. What we do is um, we use a number of cues, you know, from gaze to our motions and so on and so forth. So it's a very quick video where we, in a motion capture environment, you know, together with, um, uh, with our lead PI, uh, who's on, in, in physical therapy, we looked at human motions where, you know, humans hand over, hand over um, an object between each other. And then, you know, there are, there are many paradigms, right? So there can be um, a human, you know, being the <coughs> um, lead uh, or the follower and, and vice versa. And we looked at some of these motions. We are trying to understand what type of motions humans generate during this interaction so that we can replace one of the humans with the robot perhaps, and the uh, interaction is still seamless and as, as um, good as um, how it is between two humans. Um, another example is uh, one of our uh, projects funded through uh, NSF Future of Work program. Um, a few years ago, we started looking at, um, again, non-traditional industries where uh, robotics and automation did not um, enter yet, and it turned out, you know, seafood processing was um, one. Um, the, 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 the impact of the project has been motivated by the trade deficit um, of about $17 billion a year in the U.S. Um, when it comes to seafood, not because U.S. doesn't have the um, seafood production, but we don't have the, um, the handling, the processing, you know, uh, for adding value. So we started looking at, um, you know, from small businesses in the greater Boston area, we visited Alaska, we visited Kodiak Island and so on and so forth, and then we identified a number of problems. And our vision is to realize the future of work in these small uh, seafood processing plants uh, where we can amplify the production through human collaborative autonomous systems in safe and efficient um, environments. Um, this is the BZ Cloud, but again, you know, this, just to demonstrate the components, major components of the project, uh, we are focusing on collaborative robotics with, with specific use cases driven from the seafood industry. We are studying the interaction design with our uh, collaborators from the College of um, Arts Media Design. Uh, we are looking at the economic impact, economic impact and ethical implications of introducing autonomy in, um, in these um, uh, environments, especially the current um, uh, situation that we are going through with COVID-19 has been impacting these uh, small businesses greatly. Uh, and then we have a workforce training component where we are trying to uh, upskill the current workforce um, so that they can be ready when the technology is ready uh, for reinventing the future of work. Uh, here's a very, you know, preliminary video where we look at is we can detect and um, and identify the product based on its orientation, its uh, types, and so on and so forth. And a simple collaborative robot that can work in the human environment can sort, can help with sorting. Um, a an, an augmented reality piece provides the the human worker that's in the same environment uh, with. Um, um, some feedback on the robot actions, robot decisions. Uh, and again, part of the vision um, is to achieve uh, really truly um, a collaboration where as if two humans are working together in this um, you know, tight workspace where we look at, we try to identify the, uh, you know, we envision the shared workspace and achieve you know, one of the challenges of collaborative robots, you know, a true collaboration. Um, this brings me to another uh, quick example. Um, this is a um, uh, th this is a, an application from a manufacturing. Uh, it's cable routing. Uh, but you know, when we started working on fish, we said, okay, so this is uh, a, a, a difficult object to handle for even humans. So it's flexible. It is soft, and so on and so forth. So we said, okay, so you know, how can we expand some of the work that we are doing here? Um, and it brings, um, um, you know, it turns out we have, we do a lot of cable routing in manufacturing applications. So here's one of my students trying to route this cable um, through um, a, a 
board that's designed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, and it's even very challenging you know, for a human uh, to complete this task. And we are now trying to complete this with a robot um, almost fully autonomously or in a collaborative uh, setting. So this is our second paper at AIM this year. Uh, and this paper will be presented by my student on Wednesday, model-based manipulation of linear flexible objects with visual curvature feedback. Uh, last project that I will talk about, just to give you an idea about you know, what type of work we do at the, at the university, uh, at the Institute for Experiential Robotics at Northeastern, um, we opened a state-of-the-art drone testing facility um, a couple of years ago. And what is unique about this facility is that it doesn't only have an outdoor um, caged area, it also has an um, indoor, um, fairly large, you've seen it in this, in this previous picture, fairly large uh, an aircraft cha chamber where we can do communications, uh, where we can do some um, uh, communications, research and then take it you know it's connected to the outdoor um, section so we can have an indoor outdoor setting for a drone facility so uh, here are some of the visuals um, from the uh, from uh, our uh, drone testing facility in our burlington campus which is only about half an hour to boston um, and the use case that i want to talk about is uh, so i'm running three videos at the same time is is uh, has been funded by the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security and in collaboration with a number of partners. Um, on the right most video, you see our testing that we perform in the cage, uh, in our uh, uh, drone cage, where we build some benchmarking structures to identify, to do automated testing um, for post-disaster damage assessment. Uh, so, you know, a bunch of uh, cinder blocks you see, you know, there are gaps, there are cracks and so on and so forth. So we try to identify those. On the leftmost uh, picture, you see our outdoor testing, field testing that we have completed with, in collaboration with Mass uh, DOT um, at, a, at a Boston site. Uh, and then in the middle, you see some of our online mapping um, results. Again, the whole idea here is after a disaster, how can we quickly um, assess and understand the damage so that the recovery and restoration is much faster and much cheaper? Um, with this, I would like to end my uh, presentation. Again, I um, would be more than happy to uh, host um, uh, any of you, if you're in the Boston area, feel free to come and visit us. Uh, we have many more projects to share uh, and we are always open to collaborations. Thank you for your attention and please enjoy the conference uh, this year's AIM 2020.